Hi, this is Joe from Cloud Design Box. In this video, we're going to take a look at the education staff team and specifically look at the benefits of using the education staff team notebook. If you find this video useful, please click the like button. And if you'd like more videos from us with tips and tricks, you can click the subscribe button below this video. So if you're used to using Teams already, you'll be very familiar with what an education staff team is. It is much like a standard team, except it's geared around educators. At Cloud Design Box, we provision teams based around subjects. So within our subject sites, there will be an associated education staff team. If we want to see that in our mega menu, if we drop this down using the three lines, the burger button on the left, and here are our subjects. These are the subjects that this member of staff teaches, and we can jump into a subject and this is where we would start our long-term resources within SharePoint. Part of this provisioning includes a team of educators based around the subject. So in this case, in history, all of the history teachers have a team to communicate in, and all of these resource libraries are connected as part of the Cloud Design Box product. If you were to open Teams, you would see the history team there, and also in this subject site, we can see there's a small link here that will take us directly to that team. Also notice in staff resources, there are some folders here that have been created from the education staff team and they have little teams icons on. So this is just when a new channel is created within teams, a new folder will also appear in SharePoint. So we have our general staff channel as standard and there's another channel being created here called board resources. And that is on top of the standard staff resources folder in SharePoint. So let's just open up that team. So now in Teams, you can see this looks pretty much like a standard team that you would expect to see in Microsoft Teams. And you can see down the left hand side, we have the general channel and a channel called board resources, which was reflected in SharePoint. If we were to look at the membership of this team, we can click on manage team and see that we have one team owner who's the head of the department and then below here we have all the other history teachers as members so this is quite important if you want to use the staff notebook and um, you will need to make sure that your head of department is promoted as an owner now if you don't have the ability to promote members here contact your it administrator and they will be able to promote the heads of department to earners. So let's just jump back to the general channel. Now in here you can see that our resource libraries from SharePoint are automatically connected because this is a cloud design box education staff team. We can easily drop resources into the different year group libraries and the staff resources from here. So for example, year 11, already began to populate our SharePoint with resources, but we can also easily access those from Teams as well. So, so far, this is a lot like a, a typical team. But let's take a look at the staff notebook and I'm logged in as the head of the history department here. So if we go to staff notebook, you'll see that I have an option to set this up now. The other members of staff will get a message just saying, this will be available once it is set up. So it's up to the owners or heads of department to set these up for them. So let's set, set up the staff notebook. You can bring in existing notebook content and that could be from a notebook within your OneDrive, uh, a notebook within SharePoint that you're a member of or an existing staff notebook. However, in this case, we're just gonna start from blank. So as an educator, if you're familiar with the class notebook, you'll see this is very similar, but just based around staff. So instead of teachers and students, we have staff leaders and staff members. So we have a collaboration space. We can all work here together. So this is great for sharing ideas, working on lesson plans, uh, collecting meeting minutes, etc. Everybody can edit the content here, the staff leader and the staff member. Beyond that, we have a content library. So the leader of the department can publish read-only materials here to staff members. So as a leader, I can edit all of the content in the content library, but all of the staff members 
will only be able to view it. So it's a great way for me to push information out and for people to refer back to. There is a leader only section as well. So the staff leader can edit this and the members cannot view this content. So if there are two heads of department, uh, they will both have access to this and they'll be able to share private information in there and the other staff members will not be able to see it unless you move it into another area. Now, just like a class notebook as well, every staff member in the department gets their own personal private notebook. So the staff leader can view everybody's notebook and have really good oversight over what everybody's doing, whether that's CPD or reflection, but the staff members will only be able to see their own notebook. So it's private to them, but it's just nice that the staff leader has oversight and can keep an eye on what's going on in there. So just like a class notebook. So if we click next, we now have options to customize each staff member's notebook. So just as we would suggest with a class notebook, you can stick with these original topics here. So we've got professional development, classroom observations, lesson plan feedback, evaluation, and parent communication. Now, if you want to customize these, you can remove sections, you can add new sections at the bottom, um, or you can just change the names of these because all the text is editable as well. So if you're quite new to the staff notebook, uh, you can stick with these predefined sections and you are able to edit them um, if you're an owner or a staff leader, you can change them um, at a later date. So we're just going to go ahead and create it as standard so you can see what that looks like. So it may take um, a couple of minutes to set this up, depending on how many members there are in your department. But you are free to navigate away from this and then come back. So while we're waiting, let's just go back to all teams here. So if you are accessing your education staff teams via the Teams app and you also teach a lot of classes, you'll see that all of your teams uh, get mixed up in the Teams view here. And now we can reorder them into an order that's um, a bit easier for us. So we might put our classes first and then we've got our, our staff teams after that. But you can use this filter button up at the top to just filter down the search. So if I just wanted to view my classes for now, I can filter it there or I can view my staff team as well, or I can view all my teams together. So it's just an easy way to identify uh, the staff teams and the class teams. So let's jump back into our education staff team in, in history here. And let's see if our notebook is loaded. And you'll see you get your usual welcome screen and you can navigate the different sections with this navigation bar here. And you'll see all those different section groups have been created, collaboration, content, leader only, and then every history teacher gets their own personal notebook. And if we were to open one up, we can see they have those different sections to work in. So now I have my staff notebook set up, let's look at some of the possibilities of what we can do with it. So first of all, if you're working in Teams, the view can be a little bit squashed by the Teams menu down the left. You can expand the view, but to get a better view of any notebook, you can select open in browser here up at the top and you can either open it up in the OneNote browser app or if you have the desktop app installed, you can open it up uh, using the desktop app. So let's just open this up in browser. I'll just notice here we have a, a bit more screen space and we can permanently hide the navigation. So it just makes it a little bit easier to work on these pages. So these section groups with the permissions are great and it makes this notebook really flexible. On top of that, all of the features that you have on the menus across the top, specifically the insert tab. And if you have a touch screen, the draw tab as well, there's so much you can do with this. Um, as an example, I'm going to just jump into my leader only section. Now only I can see this as a owner of the team, a staff leader. And I'm just going to create a section here. So I'm going to click on the existing welcome section and then click add section underneath. And I'm going to create a section. I'm going to work on a classroom observation form. OK, so now I have a section just for classroom observation work and only I can see that currently. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to give that a color so it stands out. Let's have orange for observation. 
So within this section, I can have as many pages as I like. I can just keep adding pages at the bottom here. But to start with, I'm just going to create um, an observation form. And then I'm going to begin using the insert menu and I'm just going to use a variety of different tools uh, to create a nice form to send out before classroom observations. So I'm going to start off with the table. So now I have completed my resource, I'm quite happy with it. It's going to stay in my leader only section just for me uh, to look at under classroom observations. Um, but now I can use some of the staff notebook tools, uh, just like a class notebook, to distribute this out if I wanted to, for example. So if we go to the staff notebook up at the top, one of the great features of this is that I can distribute these pages. So if I know that I'm going to have a, an observation of my colleague Helen, I could drop the distribute page option down as long as I'm on that, that page currently that I want to distribute. And you have a few options. So I could distribute that out to everybody, um, but I just want to show you how to send that across to an individual. So I'm going to select individual distribution and now I can choose which colleagues I want to send that to. So this week I'm only going to observe one of my colleagues. So I'll select Helen from the list and then click next. Now I get to choose which section of our notebook that's going into. So we do have a section already called classroom observations. So perfect. I'm going to distribute it into that area of Helen's notebook. So I'll click distribute. And depending on how many people you send that to, it can take a, a minute or two, but you can, again, navigate away from this while it's distributing and carry on with something else. Uh, but that was fairly quick. I can close that now. And um, because I'm staff leader, I can drop into Helen's notebook and just check that it's landed in there. And there it is. Obviously now that's in Helen's notebook, she can begin to populate um, the observation form ready for the class observation. So that's just one example of what you could do with the staff notebook, um, but it's so flexible with these different spaces and every individual having their own personal area um, that I'm sure there are lots of ways you could see that being beneficial uh, to your department. I've just switched back to the Teams view. So we're still looking at the staff notebook, but we're just within Teams. And I also just wanted to point out there's quite a recent addition to education staff teams is that of the reflect option which you can also see at the top with the tabs in teams here so the reflect here has actually been populated with some student examples uh, in our demo account here but if we go to create a check-in you'll see that the options are different within an education staff team so instead of asking students um, about their social and emotional well-being and their progress and goals we can now do that with our department and our, our colleagues. So again, you will have to be set up as an owner of the team in order to create a reflection, but let's take a look at some of the options you have. So we do have some choices based around personal well-being. So this is a lot about um, things like workload uh, and how people are managing their goals and their emotions. You can also use some classroom relationships options. So you can see how your colleagues are feeling about lesson planning, the relationships with the students, the control of the classroom. There is an educator support option. So there's a, a few options here to talk about how the staff members feel supported by the school. And you can still as well do some custom options. You get two different ones here. So we can ask that question that we do see in the class notebook. How are you feeling about? And then you can enter any topic you like. You can also use this option to gauge how the staff members think their students are feeling about a particular topic. So you can get a really good overview of all of the classes in your department. So this will work just like it does in a class notebook and you will be able to go back to the reflect panel and drill down into the responses that you've received and get a really good overview of the staff in your department as well.